a typical college anime club lineup for 20 years ago. Before streaming in a broader appeal of anime, your college anime club wasn't just a place to watch the latest shows. For some people, it was the only place. In my case, Friday night meetings were a rare chance, chance to see the new series and get new recommendation, recommendations, of course. Of course, but we watched as a matter of what someone won't a cool find. It tended to be a much narrow cross-section of what was out there than we have now. So take a look back and see what the costume fair was at least one grow 20 years ago. Slayer Snacks. For what I understand, my college anime club happily finished out Slayer's period to the arrival of my freshman class. That means we pick up with Slayer Snacks by the time I got there, but all the new viewers were happily enough. It was easy enough to follow, even with more limited information. There was a downside of these get to get togethers at the time. Catch up is tougher. Fortunately, it's a lot easier to fill in the gaps nowadays. Cobble Bebop, my anime club, and most others at the time were watching these within speeding distance in its premiere. Cobble Bebop was a talk of the fandom when it first aired, and for several years after the SLU started getting their hands on it, it was constantly the first series to get voted each week, and witnessing the finale as a group was a real experience. Even the most seasoned members in the club have never seen anything like it. Two decades later, it's gratifying to see something that has a unique leap and has as a classic. Maze, the mega burst space, and then sometimes you just watch whatever you could get your hands on. Maze become something of a meme in our anime club, based on an SK light novel series for the mid 1990s. The anime took its name from its dimension hopping protagonist. The amnesia girl Maze Maze was a sweet and gentle person until the sun went down, which point she turned into what appeared to be a lecherous male version of herself. Between the weird story, the earworm ending theme, and the generally really strange all the characters were, well, no, I can't account for my anime club of this one, if we grew has that one show, right? Revolutionary Girl Yutina. Another essential for anime clubs in the late 90s and early 2000s, Revolutionary Girl Yutina was a difficult watch at first. Not only the first of three story arcs has been licensed, it was readily available. It was one of the first time many of us actually took our anime home, as we were closing in on the hand that the series right as spring semester was ending. Several of us went home with copies of Konihiko Ikohara's masterpiece to make our way to the ending in our own time. Like Cabo Bebop, Yutini was a new experience for a lot of us, with the story of plot, beautiful art, and plenty of opportunity for us to theorize between episodes of what was actually going on. The responsible Captain Taylor. Another of our anime class pet series, the responsible Captain Taylor was a lot of fun to watch. Sadly, it seems to get missed out a lot of nowadays. Based on the light novel series, The Most Irresponsible Man in Space, the anime follows Justy Oweki Tyler as he humbles the way in and out, or trouble of someone managing to accomplish great heroic seemingly by accident, whether or not it is by accident, whether or not like Titans and superiors, the audience can only guess for it themselves. The show star is a G is just a very lucky idiot. It's a great show that many of us may have missed otherwise. Perhaps I'll come back in style again before too, too long. Anime calls for a gun to send for pre streaming anime fans with some shows might never see have tried otherwise to got the past recommendations and run easily before social media was a thing. Still, streaming is pretty dang great.